guys, it's May May, and it's time for part two in our gift card surprise stamp set. I told you I had several ideas I wanted to bring to you. This is my second one. I'll show you how it works in just a second. First, I want to say to you, have you subscribed to my channel? Why not? It's free to subscribe. You just click the red subscribe button, set your notifications for how you want to find out when I've uploaded a new video, and there you go. So go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, check it out, guys. Ready? I think this is so cute. So what you do with this card is you pull the bottom and your gift card is revealed. Now, you'll have a cooler looking gift card than I do. I've got to decorate this one a little bit, but this little guy, when you reset it, you reset it from the top. You don't want to reset from your bottom pull, but when you give this to somebody and they do this, how much are they going to love their gift card popping out the top? So, let's make it. So, to get started, what I want to do is create a template. Y'all know this is how I roll, right? So, this piece is four by five and a quarter, and it's just a piece of cardstock out of bin. For those of you who don't know, I say bin a lot. It's where I store my cardstock, my scraps in bin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write template along the bottom. Then I know this is my template. And if you want to name it, like if you have your templates in a certain spot and you want to name all of them, that'd be great too. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to make some marks. And I'm going to be using my T-square, which I rarely use. You don't have to use your T-square. It's just what was handy to me. And I'm also going to use my cutting mat. Okay, so I want to come down one and a half inches on the side or an inch and a half on the side. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That's three little squares for me. But you certainly can just mark this um, with your pencil. Just make your marks. You're going to come down an inch and a half and you're going to make kind of a long mark there. It doesn't really matter. You actually can make your mark all the way across. And I forgot I'm making a template. So I'll do this really dark so y'all can see it. Okay, so I've made a pencil mark there. Now I want to come an inch and a half up from the bottom. So let me put this like so. Again, you could just mark an inch and a half up on both sides. That would be fine. Then I'm just going to come like this, and I'll do it where I can see better. I'll come from the top there, line it up on both sides, and make myself a mark. So that lets me know an inch and a half and an inch and a half. Okay, now I want to come in an inch and a half at the top. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to lay my little T-square down, which again, don't have to use a T-square. I just happen to have it. So I'll make a mark here. And I want those to cross over, okay? And then I'm going to come in an inch and a half on the other side. And I'm going to make a mark. And I want my lines to cross over, like I said. So I'll show you. So you see how I cross these over? So I did all of that inch and a half marking just to get this line and this line. That's really all I need. Let me draw that in Sharpie so you can see it because I'm noticing that it's reflecting. So those are the marks I made with my Sharpie. Okay, again, all I need is this mark and this mark. So what I want to do now is take my um, craft knife or your pen blade, whatever you've got, and I'm going to slice this line out from where those marks meet. So where my crossovers are, just in the center, I'm going to slice into that. Okay, just a good slice. That's all I've got there. I'll show you. I've just done a slice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the inside of my slice just about a sixteenth of an inch. Not too awful much. Just come right beside it and make another slice. What we're making here is a little hole. Okay, just a long rectangle hole. Now I'm just going to meet my edges up. That one. And I'll meet this one up. And then when I pick this up, I can kind of poke this out the back and grab it, and there we go. So I'm gonna turn it over so you can see what I did, because with all the Sharpie, you really couldn't see it. See how I just made that slot? That's all I'm doing. And remember, this is a template, so I'm gonna actually take this to my actual piece and draw the line. So I'll have to do this again, but this is nice, because if you ever wanna make this card again, it's so much easier to just have a template rather than having to come, you know, do this over and over and over again. All right, so there's that, and sometimes you can just do this and pull this guy right out without even worrying about connecting those edges. Because again, we're, this is not gonna be seen, especially this one, because it's the template. All right, so because I've made my template, I can now take the piece that is going to be what holds my slider mechanism, and I'm gonna use this black, because I think this will be cute. I can take this and I can lay it on top, and I can make my pencil mark. Now, because I'm doing this on camera and I know the pencil's gonna be hard to see, I'm gonna make my mark with a white pen so you guys can see it. So all I'm gonna do now is color in that slot from our template. So see, when I go to make this again, it'll be super easy, right? I only have to do that because I've got my template. And I'm gonna cut those out just like I did because I just need some slices right there. 
You can use a ruler if you want to. I don't really see a need for it. I'm just going to, I'm basically going to cut that white ink away. Or if I was using pencil, I would just cut my pencil away and make a slot. So there's a slot there and a slot here. Okay, and then I've cut it down to the table. I'll poke it through back here. I'm just going to pull that off. Just like so, poke it through, pull it off. That's all I need to do. I'm not worried about that. You're not gonna see any of this, okay? So if you don't feel like it's very good or it's very straight, don't be this picky or do whatever. You do you, if you're as picky as this, do it. See how I just got that a little more open? I should be fine. I just need a space for my plastic to run through. That's all that's for. If you've ever made one of these pull and push cards, this is kind of how it starts. All right. I'm going to take a piece of plastic. This is from some packaging. This is just a plastic bag. You could use Ziploc bag. You could use um, plastic container. This is literally a bag that some product came in that I just happened to have. I just cut a strip off. And you just wanna make sure that your strip is cut thin enough to fit through those slots that you made or skinny enough. And mine should be, looks like it's gonna be fine. Now I need some sticky tape. All right, so I've got my tape out and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to feed this piece of plastic through here, okay? So I've got it through one side, and then I'm gonna feed it through the other side. Now for my card, the white polka dot is going to be the back of this page. I want the gray polka dot to be the front. So that's why I've got, I'm working with the gray on the front here. All right, so I flip this over. Now what I wanna do real quick is just make sure that this doesn't catch anywhere and it seems to be rolling just fine, okay? Now, I'm going to take the bottom piece, and I'm going to line it up just beneath the slot. There's a little space that I'm leaving right there, and I want to put some tape there. So, just some double-sided adhesive. And you don't need, I mean, you just need tiny little pieces, right? Just this little tiny piece. I'm going to put it right to that edge, like so. Then I'm going to peel that backer off. Use my tweezers. They're sitting here close. All right. So I've got that exposed, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna bring this piece over, but I don't wanna be tight. I wanna be kinda loose because I want this to flow pretty easy. I don't wanna be super loose, but I want that to be able to, let me lift this up and show you. You can do a little practice run, okay? I want that to be able to easily flow back and forth. See how easy that does? Then I'm gonna cut off what I don't need. So I don't need anything on this plastic past the sticky point. I just need that to be stuck down. So just cut that away and make sure that's stuck. All right, so I'm gonna run my adhesive back up to the top. That is important. I do want my adhesive to live at the top right there, okay? That way I get a full pull, okay? That'll make sense when you do it, but I'm gonna keep my little adhesive piece at the top. Now let's make the little strip that's gonna live back here. So this little strip is gonna be what pulls your plastic down and it's gonna live like this and it's gonna hang out at the bottom just about a quarter of an inch, all right? So what I've done, by the way, all the measures are in the blog, so I'm not gonna worry about going over measures right now because it'll be easier for you just to get them in the blog post. We'll have them all laid out. What I'm gonna do is take my corner rounder punch and on the one quarter inch side, on the smaller punch side, I'm gonna punch the edges of that just to make it super cute. Okay, and while I've got it here, I'm gonna stamp it with the word pull. This will make life easier in the long run. For those of you that have never seen it, this is my stamp set called Action. I'm gonna use the word pull. By the way, this is the old, old, old packaging. This is like my original set that I ever had. So that's why that one looks, yours will look different. Yours will have the new packaging when you order it. All right, I'm gonna stamp the word pull at the bottom and I wanna put it as far to the bottom as I can because I don't know how much of this is gonna show, okay? I'm sure most of it will show, but that way I'm not putting it up here and then I end up hiding it inside the, inside the card. All right, so now with our piece like this, we need another piece of sticky tape. So pull this guy over here. I'm gonna peel off another piece just wide enough to live on the plastic. You do not want your tape to hang off the plastic, okay? And I'm going to put it right over where I put my last one, up at the top, just like so. Again, I want to give this little pull piece as much length as I possibly can on the pull. All right, so there we go. Now what I'm gonna do, I think I'll do this this way and I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna flip this over for a second. Now I'm gonna put this word where I want it to show. I want it to just say pull. 
I mean, just see how that's going to stick out just like that. I don't want to stick it out too far. I just want to be able to see the word. Now I'm going to flip this back over and then lay this down. And it's perfectly fine for it to overlap the slot. It's actually a good thing because it won't catch on the slot. If it's like that, see how it won't catch? That's how we want it. Okay, so that's going to pull really nice and easy. All right, so now what I want to do is lay this on the front side, and I'm going to create the piece that's going to hold my gift card or my money, whatever I'm going to put in it on the front. Now, this is the piece that's, that we're going to call the slot mechanism, okay? It sounds scary, but it's not that bad. All right, so I've got this piece at four and three-fourths in my trimmer. I want to score it at three and three-fourths. This is just basically going to give me an inch to turn up. I'm going to do this on the back side as well, so it'll be a nice, good fold. It would basically just give me an inch to turn up to hold my gift card or my cash, whatever I put in it. And then I'll just fold this and crease it down. This is the mechanism. Look how hard it is. Okay, so with the pull tab showing at the bottom where I want it, and then on this piece of plastic, it's time to add some more sticky tape. Now for this piece of sticky tape, you want it at the bottom. Now why is that? You need to give room for this guy to slide up, okay? If you put the tape at the top, and I'll tell you from experience, if you put the tape here, it's not going to roll. It's going to be locked into place, all right? So I'm going to pull this off or expose the adhesive part like so, all right? And then what I want to do here is I want this to stick up about a quarter of an inch. If you needed to mark it, you could. Like if you want to just kind of mark this, I'm going to put it here and make a little mark. So I know halfway in between that block is a quarter of an inch and then here's a quarter of an inch. Just let me see kind of where I need it to stick up above the slot. And I'm going to put this down just like that. So basically, we're about three-eighths of an inch from the bottom. Okay. Now let me show you loosely. Let me get that stuck down good. Now look how messy it is now. But look, that's what it's going to do. But don't worry, we're going to put it all, we're going to make it all stable. All right. So there's the beginning. So let's put everything back into place. Now, my first bit of stability comes on the sides of this guy. And that's where I'm going to go to my foam tape. So I'm going to cut myself a strip of foam tape that's about this long. About. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact. Just about that long. There we go. And then I'm going to cut this in half. Now, what I want to do with my sticky tape here is I want to put it to either side of this pull and that way this guy will stay straight. I will promise you that this won't be the straightest thing you've ever made. It just won't be. It, it's going to be wonky in places. It's going to wiggle here and there. It's not, it's just not that big of a deal. Let it be a little wonky. Now the one thing I want to do is make sure I don't go above my quarter of an inch warning there. Okay. Now on this one, you remember I cut the middle. I'm going to turn it to the inside so I get that factory straight cut to go beside, and I'm gonna to go to that quarter of an inch mark at the top right below it, or you could go even further below it. And then I'm just laying this really close to my slider mechanism, but not on it. If you put it on it, it's not gonna move. You don't wanna do that, okay? So there's that. So we've got this side pretty secured, and what you'll see is um, when we pull, those little sides are gonna kind of stop it. Isn't that cool? But we need to do the same back here. We need to give this guy a little stability. All right, there's a couple ways to do it. You can do the same thing with the little um, foam, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can build a little piece that goes around here and glue it down. But I don't think you need both. We're going to see. I think you can do it with just the one. All right, so I'm going to cut myself some sticky tape because this is going to pop up on the back as well. And this is a longer piece this time because I really want to have some stability for this little pull tab. So get that cut like that. And again, I want to use that factory cut straight edge. I'm going to put it right beside with a little bit of little bit of air between them. I don't want it be, to be too tight. And then I'll do the same on this side, the factory cut straight edge to the inside and lay that in like that. So now when I put this down, it can't go, oops, <laughs> it can't go any further sideways than this, right? So we get a much more stable pull on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and adhere this piece to my card base. And I want you to notice, I'm just using a solid card base. It's not an open and closed base. It's just a solid card base. Because what you can do with that is you can put all your sentiments and things on the back. And it will be great. Now, notice I cut two pretty good pieces of Scotty. I'm going to run this up the other side 
again, just adding stability. And it needs to be popped up for our mechanism to work. And I'm going to cut a little more right there. Yes, you do use more foam on this kind of project than most, especially with me. I don't usually use this much foam, but I want this guy to stay nice and sturdy. All right, so this piece, oops, I may need to trim that a little. This piece here. I think I need to trim them both just a tiny bit. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trim that and stick it in here for extra stability. Trim this. Stick it in here. We're not going to waste it. All right, so let's reveal all these backers. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to center this over my base piece. And I should have a good eighth of an inch all the way around that will show. Now watch. Look how cool this is. It will pull like so. Isn't that neat? And that, see how we got that tape in there? That foam tape is holding it still. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's go to the next step. The next step for me is some coloring. I'm wondering if I want to use this side. I think I will use this size for the package. I think that'll be cute. We'll do a little polka dotted gift. Now I'm going to do that same trick I told you. I'm going to make this look like um, paper piecing, but I'm not paper piecing. All I'm doing is stamping and I'm going to color the center to look like we've used two different pieces of cardstock. Look, I got a little bit of, I'm not going to stress. We're going to keep going. I'll cover that up. Now, I'm going to use an alcohol marker, and I'm going against everything I've ever taught you. This is pigment ink, and I'm going to use an alcohol marker with it, which you shouldn't do. But since I'm not doing detail or shading or putting down a whole lot of ink, I'm not going to let that stop me. All right, I'm just going to be super careful and not try to smear it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a red. This is called Fresh Watermelon. It's a bright red. And I'm going to color. Again, I did this yesterday or did this in my video, which I filmed yesterday. Um, I'm going to color the center so it looks like I have another piece of cardstock in here, but I don't. So it'll look like we've done a couple of different colors, but I haven't had to fussy cut any pieces. So I'm going to color this middle piece, which would be the ribbon running up the center of the package. It also will look like we lined up those polka dots perfect, right? All right, then I'm going to color this piece, which would be the middle ribbon of this package. And then I'm going to color the bow. So see, it looks like I used multiple pieces of cardstock, but we used only one. And now for fussy cutting. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting off this piece and putting it into my storage bin. And then these pieces I'm going to trim with my trimmer to make life easy. Now back to our card. So this is the reason you want to clear about a quarter of an inch up here, okay? You want to have a place to glue the top of your gift package down. So that's why I cleared that little spot. So I'm gonna take some glue here and I'm gonna run it just right at the top and I don't need much because what I really don't wanna do is I don't wanna glue this down. I just wanna glue this onto it and I'm just gonna try to eyeball center that little section there and just glue that down. So it becomes our stopper. It also becomes the top of our package. And now we can work on putting the other piece on. And let me show you that. Now this is the piece I'm gonna hide all of my workings with. It's going to sit just like this, okay? And it's going to hide everything. And then this piece is going to get glued right here. So we have a package at the top of the page. And when you pull this, it comes down. And then my sentiment will go here. I'm showing you this now because if you wanna do any decorating to this, now's the time. I don't think I'm going to. I think I like it like it is. And then to glue it down, I'm gonna use these pieces right here. So I'm gonna lift up the little strips off of that. And just for safekeeping, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to these, just a little. So a dot, 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 just down the um, piece, just to extra added protection. And now what I wanna do is I wanna line this piece up at the top. I actually cut it to go this way. <laughs> I wanted my lines going across this time. So I'm gonna cut it to line up at the top of my package. And I wanna see a little bit of the edge all the way around. So see that, how I've got a little bit of the edge all the way around? Again, all these measures will be um, for you on the blog. I'll have it all laid out for you. And then we're going to glue this guy down. You could pop it up on foam if you wanted to, but we have enough foam in this guy, in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna turn this sideways so I can see what I'm doing. And all you do here is line up the center of the package, like so, and just glue that straight down. So there's your little gift box, okay? Now we need to put a sentiment. 
For my sentiment, I'm gonna use two different ones. I'm gonna use the one that says, this one's on me and you deserve a treat. I think that'll be cute. So my strip here is three and three fourths long and I cut it an inch and a half wide and it's just a piece of white cardstock. I think this will really pop on here. So what I wanna do is at the top, I wanna to do this one's on me. You could switch these, by the way, whichever way you want to say it, because you could say you deserve a treat, this one's on me, or this one's on me, you deserve a treat. It doesn't matter how you say it. And I'm going to take you deserve a treat and put it underneath right here. Hope my head didn't get in the way. If it did, I apologize. All right, look, isn't it cute? Then I'm going to do one more thing, which I think is adorable. On this set, we gave you these little sparkle stars, which I think are so cute. I'm going to use the ink called Cheerful from VersaClaire is the brightest, prettiest yellow. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some little sparkle stars in and around the letters and things and all around just to make it look so cheerful. And I'm gonna use two sizes. I use the large one and I'm gonna use the small one as well. Now I'm bringing my card back over. This guy's gonna live right down here. I just think this is so cute. I love that sparkle star. I did not know that I would want to use it as much as I do. I'm thinking of all the other places I can use it. That's gonna be one of those things I probably leave really close at hand. Now I'm not popping this up on foam. I'm gluing it straight down. And the reason for that is I already have two layers of foam with our pull mechanism. All right, now we need to put our present inside. So this is my little faux gift card. This was given to me by Lisa. This is like the very same size. I need to cricket this and make it look like a gift card. I probably will. All right, so here's what you'll do. You're gonna pull this little guy out, isn't that cute? And remember, you have that little slot that will catch your card. It just sits right in like that, okay? And then I wouldn't push up. I'd be careful with pushing up. When you're loading it, push down like this to get it loaded and leave it like that. And then when you give it to the recipient, they will pull and their little gift card will slide right out. Isn't that adorable? So reset it from the top. I think you'll be happier to do it that way. And then pull it out. So cute, I love this. This one worked out really well. This is just what I wanted. So there you go, guys. This is idea number two for the gift card surprise stamp set. There'll be more coming. This is just the second one in my brain. And if you would like to get the stamp set, we have it available on the store for you. It might have sold out over the weekend, but there may still be some there. But if not, I mean, if there's not, don't worry, we'll have it coming back in stock. The other thing I wanna encourage you, two things. Number one, if you make a project with this, share it with us over on our customer gallery. We'd love to see what you guys are doing. And even better, head to our Discord. You guys, we have over a thousand crafters hanging out in our Discord, talking, chatting, sharing what they're making. And it is so fun. Go check us out. Now, all those links will be in the description below, as well as the blog post for how to make uh, this card. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye.